thank you jesus heavenly father in your loving kindness and tender mercies you have given us another day that we may gather lord together unto you lord jesus a gathering unto the lord a time of god to once again gather together with one desire and that is to worship and meet the living god thank you for every grace you poured out on us and the holy spirit of god you gave unto us lord a fresh this morning to worship you bring our expressions and pour out our heart before thy throne of god yes sir god we thank you for the assurance in our hearts that we have come to the living one it is the lord god even the god of our fathers that we are worship this morning and that we have come unto thank you for strengthening our spiritual man lord stirring our spirit within the great hope we have within us even christ jesus the hope of our glory we thank you for every ministration of thy spirit deep within us drawing us deeper even in that most holy place the knowledge of the eternal one father we thank you for this time again to gather together lord around your word to meditate upon your word lord speak to our hearts in the midst of many voices help us to hear thee help us to hear your voice o god there are many distractions there are many many things around us to divert our attention our focus lord help us this morning that we would be single hearted lord jesus yes that we would be seated in your presence with this divine determination in us to hear thee alone oh cause us to hear your voice beyond words of men yes sir god that's our prayer help each one of us therefore to exercise our spiritual faculties yes sir god we yield ourselves unto thee once again o most holy one pray also at this time for all my brethren who are interpreting into different languages in various places in this country oh god we pray that you would help everyone with that unction of the spirit that we all need granting us the proper the the words that we need a god those words those proper words to bring the expressions of god of thy thought in different languages so we look up unto thee for that grace and the anointing to rest upon all of us yes sir god and we know that apart from your holy spirit 
nothing can be really accomplished. Lord, therefore we pray that the spirit of truth may rest upon us, grant us every expression and utterance we need to God at this time. That thy word will reach every hungry soul, that we may truly move on to this great and high call in Christ Jesus. So we thank thee again, O God, merciful one, help us. We yield ourselves into thy hands again. Spirit of truth, lead us and guide us. We remain open to you. Let thy lordship be our portion once again. And that liberty that flows from that lordship. Worship and bow before thee once again. And in Jesus' most precious and matchless name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. We will turn to the book of Hebrews, sorry, the book of Isaiah to begin with. The book of Isaiah and chapter 52. The Lord has been speaking to us from this chapter. God's divine desire to restore Zion. Let me read these verses again. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. The holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O Jerusalem. O captive daughter of Zion, sorry. For thus said the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. The Lord has been speaking to us and making one thing very clear, that God will restore Zion. The Lord will bring Zion into that full expression. The Lord will bring his church into that fullness in Christ Jesus. As we heard, the time for God to restore his people, to restore the testimony of Christ, to bring his church into the fullness in Christ the time is come. There is every indication that the Lord will set her free from everything that is binding her. There is no power that will hold her anymore. It is time for her to walk away from her slavery. It is time for her to put on what the Lord says to her to put on. It is time for her to return to her rightful place with Christ. And to be seated on the throne with him. Overcome even as I overcame. So we see the divine invitation of God prophetically reflected in these verses in the book of Isaiah wherein he says, shake off the dust, arise and sit down on that throne. Now, 
as we heard, to come into that realm, you know, it is necessary that God's people come into the realm of faith and obedience. And the Lord has been speaking to us. The great need for the church of Jesus Christ, for God's people to come into the true faith. Jesus Christ himself said, when the Son of Man would come back, will he find the faith? The Apostle Paul, while writing to Timothy, he said, many shall depart from the faith. You know, so we see that in the end times, one of the things that would be needed by the true church of Jesus Christ will be the true faith. As we heard in our previous meditations, as we heard in our previous meditations, the important thing here is that we should have that faith that pleases God. That pleases God. And that's what we have been seeing from the book of Hebrews and chapter 11. I do not know if I'm going very fast. I am? Okay. Because our brethren have to translate. So, faith that pleases God. You know, today we see people talk about uh, faith. Preachers would talk about faith. But that faith is something that pleases man. Pleases the self. They ask God for this. They ask God for that. They ask God for miracles. They ask for wonders. They ask God to do a certain thing. And when that need is met, then it pleases them. We read in the book of, in the, in the Old Testament, God gave the desires of their heart, but sent leanness to their soul. They asked for meat, God gave them meat. They asked for water, God gave them the water. They got, asked for victory over the enemies, God gave them victories. But they all perished in the wilderness. So we see people ask and they think it is their faith. And they are satisfied. But what we read in Hebrews 11 is not a faith that pleases self and man, but a faith that pleases God. You know, so that's what we saw, you know, since a couple of weeks we are looking at this scripture in Hebrews 11. Now we saw verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance. Or faith is the assurance of things of uh, things hoped for and proving of things not seen. Proving of things not seen. Now we thank God for many wonderful things, thoughts we could receive from God's word. We saw that all these men come under a great divine influence. And we saw that that divine influence was the assurance in their hearts. And we saw very clearly what was that assurance. That was God's revealed will for their life, for their time. which had a great connection to eternity future. 
So they came under that divine influence. The assurance of things hoped for was nothing else but that which God had spoken about his will in their lives. We saw the example of Abel. We saw the example of Abraham. We also read through and saw the example of Noah and many other men last week. Some died of the sword and some were saved from the sword. And it did not matter whether they were saved from or they were not saved. They had one thing upon their hearts. That was God's purpose. The will of God. They did not compare themselves with others. Which the Lord spoke very clearly to us last week. Oh, so we heard the important matter is. The will of God in our lives. What is God's revealed will? What is God's purpose? What is this call all about? And I would like to say that unless we know the will of God, we have no assurance. Until our eyes are open to see the will of God, there is no real assurance of the things hoped for. So. You know so we have no assurance. Until we know the will. Until we know the purpose. Until we know what this call is. And this therefore becomes the ground of. My faith. And your faith. So this is very important. That's what we see in the life of all these men. This assurance that this is God. This is not of me. Now the big question in our hearts is, as I ask this question, do you have this assurance? Many a time we ask the people, do you have the assurance of salvation before they are baptized? This is a question that I always ask. Do you have the assurance that you are born again? And even so I want to ask us today, do you have the assurance of what God's will is in saving you, in bringing you into this great salvation. And that is something we must answer and say, this is God. That's how we will be unshakable in situations. Example of Paul. We refer to his life. It pleased God to reveal his son in me. That I may preach him. It's not some teaching. It is not some doctrine. But it pleased God. And Paul taught this to others. And they taught it to others. But the reality it is that it came from God. God may use any man. But the assurance is it comes from God. So it's very important. You know there are people who say oh this is GSF teaching. This is GSF thing. 
This is what this group is teaching. I want to challenge those people in the name of the Lord. Be open hearted and turn to God's word. We have nothing to declare other than what is written in God's word. Our pursuit is after God himself. And that salvation under which he has called us through his eternal son. So it's not a matter of a fancy doctrine that we want to follow. A kind of doctrine that we have majored on. And we feel that we are the sole proper uh, people who will propagate that. So my brothers and sisters, listen carefully. As we heard, we must know that this is God. There must be a revelation by the Holy Spirit. Just as, as Abraham heard, the God of glory appeared to him. Abel had a great inner witness of what he was doing. Because he heard the whisperings of God within him. So we saw very clearly in our previous meditations. We face with many things contrary to this call. But we must have the assurance this is God's will. If this is God's will, why? Why things are not visible? Why everything is contradicting this call? And as I said, everything will be to make this call unreal and impossible. So we see two things, God's will and we see on the other side everything that contradicts. You know, and it's my prayer that God will help all of us. We heard last week very clearly from the life of Abel and from the life of Abraham. And I want to say one thing here very clearly. You know, we must not miss the burden of the Holy Spirit in all that we hear. There could be many other thoughts that the Holy Spirit may bring in according to certain needs in our lives. But the main thrust and burden of the Holy Spirit we shouldn't miss. You know, the Holy Spirit can minister to us many other needs within us. He sees that and may guide the person who is sharing the word and bring in those thoughts. But remember, we are not to deviate from the thrust, the burden of the Spirit of God. So I would once again request all of us to check ourselves. We can go in our meditations or in, in, in studying the word, or, you know, based on this word. And we can go on to many things and lose the main thrust. And the main burden. We can get into Abel's life, we can get into Abraham's life. 
and we can go into many things and then miss the very thrust burden now as we heard last week god's will will have to be a settled matter in our hearts you know and that's one thing am i there as the spirit is burden and speaking to me is god's will about this call to be part of his glorious bride and overcoming company is that god's will in my life is that a subtle thing in my heart this is the issue brothers and sisters and that that's a subtle matter i have no doubt and i have taken a position i have stepped into that ground i have come into that ground of god's will that place that represents god's will i have come into the body of christ i have come into this company of people who are following after as paul says leave these things and pursue after righteousness godliness together with those who follow after so i have taken that position i come into the company of those people who are pursuing after it and after having come to that position after having come to that place where you said the world is nothing to me my future is not what i am concerned about what god would give me i will be happy with you have taken that position you have come to that ground but no evidences everything is contrary everything is contrary you are challenged by your own people you are challenged by your own children you are challenged by your own uh, parents perhaps challenged by your family members you talk about it but we don't see anything in your life we are seeing things different as we heard last week when things go contrary in your life and mine then what is our stand how long it takes to settle this matter in our hearts how long it takes to settle this will of god no evidence is so called everything is contrary everything that denies this call everything is against this position i have taken inwardly and outwardly it looks unreal and impossible and everything argues this will of god and this position i have taken so i think i see this a gr great need as a great need in my own life i know i have gone through it in the past but that's not enough how will i be now in my present situations and challenges so we see 
When we look into the history of God's people, as we see here in Hebrews 11, and through the church history, men of God took that stand in their times. And everything else was there contrary to make that unreal, saying it is impossible. And yet the history has proved in the lives of these men that inwrought work of God was something true. And everything that said stood contrary was something that passed away as unreal. Those things that stared at them went away. But that which they held on to inwardly and in some measure outwardly, those things proved to be real and true, which passed on to eternity. Hallelujah. So I do not know if you are understanding what I'm sharing. I pray that God would help. You know, and as, as I said, unbelief. Is something that will take us away from this call. As we saw from the life of the children of Israel. We saw very clearly. What they sought for, they did not receive. Why? They sought for what they sought for, they did not receive. Not because God was not willing, not because there was no promise, not because there was no covenant. Not because God did not do miracles. But because of one thing. We saw that. Because of unbelief. Because they had no faith. You know it can happen to God's people in the new covenant. And that's all we read in the book of Hebrews. We are not of them who draw back in unbelief. That's what we read in chapter 10. And then comes chapter 11 and verse 1. So my dear brothers and sisters. Here is a word for our times. For us for this present day in which we are living. Oh may God help us is my humble prayer. Now let's go on today once again. And may the Lord lead us is my prayer. So we heard the real issue is bound up with the will of God. That's the real issue. The will of God, God's mind, God's purpose, God's call. And as we heard a while back, the evidences, things around, things in our own lives, they seem to prove that this is not God's will. Listen carefully. This is not God's will. When we look at the lives of these men, 
This is what they faced. The issue was bound up with God's will. They knew within their hearts this is God's will for them. Whether it was Abel or Abraham or Noah or all other men mentioned here. But the evidences are always to say this is not God's will. But the will of God was so real in their inward man. You know, sometimes you may think like these are mere repetitions. No, it is not. That's because you are hearing certain words. But listen carefully. The will of God. They are assured of, that is assurance. But the evidences are all contrary, negative. But the will of God was so real in their inward man. So we see that Everything was bound with God's will. But things were so different outwardly. Evidences were all negative in their lives. And I would like to go a little more deeper into this today. Remember one thing. I want to make this very clear right now. The first thing is, the will of God is bound with God himself. The first thing is, the will of God is bound with God himself. Now this was the victory in the life of these men. They involved God himself in their lives. Hallelujah. Now how important it is for God's people, his remnant church in these end times. When we are faced with the world when we are faced with Satan, when we are faced with an easygoing Christianity, how important it is to have this assurance, this will of God, this call of God, this purpose of God is bound with God himself. Now it's easy to say this. It's easy to hear this. It's easy to then repeat or share it out in a gathering. But. The real issue is. Is it by the Holy Spirit within us? It pleased God to reveal to me. And this is where these men involved God himself in that which they saw as God's call upon their lives. And this is not a small issue. It's easy to share this. It's easy to text this to other people. It's easy to say this to others and encourage others. Well, good. But this is not a small issue. Amen? Yeah.
There's a new term everywhere we hear, WhatsApp University. Now there it's all very easy. But when it comes to real life, this is our calling. When we look at these men, they involved God. How far away we are. So that only tells us the great need in our lives. You know, it's easy for us, Lord, Lord I will pray for faith in my life. I, I want faith. I want to trust God. But remember from where it will come. Oh, may God help us. Now, if you look into the life of Abel, what made Abel to hang on this way of God? What made Abel to hang on to God and go this way that he took. Hallelujah. But that is the issue. What made Abel? What made him to hang on to this way? The way that he took. The way that he chose. Why is he clinging on to it? When outwardly the other way seems to be better. Why he believes so strongly that this is the way that he should take. Now, this is important. Now, this is where many have faltered. This is, the way, where, this is where many have gone the other way. Oh, may God open our eyes of understanding, brothers and sisters. So this call is bound with God himself. And therefore they involved God. And I see that great need in my own life in a greater measure in these days. And that is not a small issue. So Abel... You know, he was clinging on to God's way. Despite every other thing before him. He chooses this way. He clings to this way. He believes so strongly that this is the way. And not Cain's way. Not Cain's way. Not Cain's way. What is involved in this is God himself for him. And nothing less than God himself. You know, you know just a thought again. Book of Jude and uh, verse 11. He says, vote to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And ran greedily after error of Balaam for reward. Perished in the gain sings of Korah. Now remember this. The writer Jude, the apostle, says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. 
in the way of Balaam, in the way of Korah. All these men were men who knew God. You know, so we thank God that Abel didn't go the way of Cain. Now this is what I want to say today. Saints, it's so easy to go the way of Cain. Offer to God what you feel right. Serve God the way you feel right. Live the way you think right. That's Cain's way. Cain's way was the way of the flesh. The way of the self that pleases. Not in line with the whisperings of the spirit within him. And as we heard, it was right for him. He brought the hard labor of his own ground, the fruit of the ground. While God's principle of sacrifice and offering was on another's life. It was shedding of blood. It was pointing towards Christ. The Lamb of God. It was the mind of God. Where God was involved. And I want to say brothers and sisters. Balaam. Korah. Where did they deviate? All these men deviated where? One place. Self. Pleasing myself. I want to say one thing here. This is where we have to be very careful. I need to know myself. The, the first issue is that this call is bound with God himself. This purpose of God. And therefore I must involve God in my life, in my decisions. In my choices. I must involve God. My young brothers and sisters, listen carefully. We are living in a time of many uncertainties. I was listening to someone yesterday. Somebody was telling me. So many young people are depressed. When their education will really progress. Finishing 12th, when will be the exam, entrance exams will be held. How long this is going to go on? What is my future? And I want to tell you, I cannot tell the world this. But I can tell you one thing. Put your trust in God. Position yourself in God's will. Trust in the Lord. I cannot give you any answers to this. But certainly God, who is the Lord of your life, can give you that assurance within you. Therefore, I want to encourage everyone for Abel, his answer was nothing less than God himself. And if you look into history, and I ask you, was Abel right? And Abel was right. Abel's simple issue was the will of God. Justification by faith.
His simple assurance was, this is God. This is God. Nothing in the visible realm. This is God. And God proved that he was right. The fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. He was right. God was involved. God was involved. God was involved himself. So we see Abel by his faith involved God. Nothing less than God himself, even in your life and my life. In all our trials, in all our situations, I know how I am being tried in my own life. How I am being tested in my own life, week after week. I'm learning the ways of God. I need to involve God himself. Lord, you have called me. You have brought me into this body. You have kept me here. It's you, Lord. Yes, there are many things to be changed within me. And that is also involving God in your life. And God knows it. So we see here very clearly in the life of, from the life of, uh, you know, Abel. And just in the light of this, I want to turn us to a little, uh, uh, to the book of Romans chapter 4. You know, what Abel was involved, you know, Romans chapter 4. That chapter which we all know very well. Abraham justified by faith. I would like to read verses 1 to 3. Chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath were off to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now again chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we read here very clearly justified by faith. Being made righteous by faith. So we see that our justification and our being righteous with God is bound with God himself. Hallelujah. Justifying the ungodly. Amen. Amen. Abraham was ungodly. He was a heathen. Idol worshipper. The ungodly was justified by faith. Abel a sinner was justified by faith. We know that every man born on this earth is 
without God. Everyone has lost their God. We are lost people in this, in this universe. We did not know the way. Now when we look around <coughs> in the earth today, look at the millions of people all around us. And what are they striving for? What do we see around today? They are striving for that place where they may be justified with God. Isn't it true? Look at every religion. By means of every religion, everybody is striving after whether it is through their sacrifices, with their idols, with their incarnations, with their self-afflicting life. Some are agonizing in pain that they put on themselves according to their religion. Why are they all doing all this? Climbing up steps, going on their knees, rolling on the, do on the, on the road. Why are they doing all that? For one thing, to be justified before God, isn't it? And where are they? Poor souls. They all want to be justified. And they've lost the way that justification is only by faith. That the living God is involved in it. So we look at the world around today, even at this point of time, having come across a second wave and death everywhere, fear everywhere, bodies thrown everywhere, so many things happening everywhere. Look at the misery of souls. The misery of souls, the dread, the fear, the horror. The tyranny, the oppression of evil spirits above all these things. And we know that all these people have lost the way. What are they trying to do in whatever they do? Justification with God. As we heard, God is involved in it. It is God who justifies the sinner, the ungodly. And if we don't get our feet on that rung, on that step of the ladder, we have no place to go. And we thank God for that. We are justified by the blood of Christ. We are justified through his death. Christ has come into our lives. The great assurance of salvation came to us. Amen. By the death and the resurrection of Christ. We are justified. Not by our works. But by God. Now remember that this was the assurance of Abel. This was also the assurance in the life of Abraham just as we read. And they stood on that ground. God is involved in this.
And if I do not stand on this, I have lost the way. Now the sad thing today, we see in the contemporary Christianity is, they would speak about justification by faith, but a life to be lived by faith <laughs> according to that plan of his salvation that is rejected. I hope you understand what I am saying. Assurance that we are saved by faith it is through Christ's death we are saved. That assurance people talk about. But that is just the first step in the ladder. Abraham believed God. That was counted to him for righteousness. But look at that life he lived thereafter. That people forget. I am saved by faith. I am saved by faith. Okay. Where is that life? In the assurance of that purpose unto which you have been saved. Many want only assurance of heaven. Not the assurance of God's purpose. Hallelujah. Oh, may God help us therefore. Now, let me bring us back again to Abraham's life. We looked at Abel's life for a moment. And I would like to look at Abraham's life for a moment again today. I have no doubt that Abraham had such times as you and I have. The promises, yes. The covenant, yes. But where is their fulfillment? Assurances, yes. But what is happening on the ground? Made heirs. Yes. But what we have got? You see, this is where, as I said, no doubt that we had such times as Abraham had in his own life. Abraham had the appearances of God in his life. But this is what he went through. God on one side. And things seen on the other side which are contrary. Two different realms. On one side God and the other side things seen which are contrary. God is there. But everything here contradicts. God and what God has spoken. God has said. God has promised, but everything seems to say that it is a mistake. It is wrong. The promises are something not to be relied upon. Now these are things that Abraham faced in his own life. 
the test of time the test of time god seemed to be hiding god appeared but now he is hiding you know the test of time and the absence of god is the hardest they are the hardest test of all no evidence of promise nothing in sight made heirs yet waiting yet to wait for the unseen yet only by waiting and learning to wait for god that's a hard thing that's the only way to find ourselves involved with god waiting that's the only way to get involved with god i would like to say that again underline that waiting is the only way to get involved with god and to involve god in other words Ten years after he had believed God for his son, he waited for ten years, and he believed God for his son. And then he came to a place. I'm not going into all the details, but then Abraham came into a place where he felt he could no longer wait. he felt he could no longer wait he knew that god intended him to have an heir he knew that that was made clear to abraham and he knew that he was convicted he was waiting on god but nothing was happening and the years were passing by and he felt he could no longer wait Now therefore Abraham sought to provide one for God So Abraham sought to provide one He sought to have an heir He did it for God for god's name now in that which happened in the life of abraham through hagar it was not abraham's motive that was wrong but his starting point and what was that he felt he could still do something to produce a child that was where he was wrong not that he should have an heir that he should have an heir is okay that's what god wanted but where he was really went wrong was when he said he could do it he felt he could still do something in order to produce a child and indeed he could and he did and that was ishmael at 86 he yet had that capacity to have a son <laughs> at 86 
And we know all that happened. I'm not going to divert our thoughts into all that. I brought this example. As I said, we have had times like Abraham in our lives. Promises, covenants, assurances. But the waiting time and lack of these evidences outwardly as the time goes by can be hard on us. So we see that there followed further long wait in the life of Abraham. Until the age of 100 Until the age of 100. When he could no longer do even this what he did some years ago. In the strength of his own. Turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Verse 19, and being not, so, not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, but he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now let me read it from another translation to make it amply clear. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger in that he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. So what we see here is, God brought him to a place where he could no longer do what he did some years ago. A complete death to his flesh. No longer do what he did. He figured his body was as good as dead. It was such a man. It was to such a man. A dead man. A powerless man. Now. A dead man in himself, a powerless man in himself. God began to work. God began to work. And there, now he believes, I cannot, but you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What a place to come to. I cannot, but you can. Hallelujah. We haven't come there in many, many areas of our lives. There are some areas I cry out to God, Lord, I cannot, only you can. But there are some areas I'm not there. Blessed are those who will come to that ground. And involve God. Set ourselves away. And involve God. Lord you said. You call me. I cannot. But you can oh God. 
It's beyond me. Hallelujah. Oh, God is working in us. To bring us to that place that we would know this is God's will. We want to involve you, God. Hallelujah. That's the ground that he came to. Lord, I cannot. There was a time I could and I did mistakes. Lord, you can. And it was this faith that helped him when he offered Isaac on the altar. Lord, you can. What an assurance with which he said to his son, God will provide. Hallelujah. I know I'm far away. And I'm sure we all will progress. We have made mistakes. And that's why I said, we were places where Abraham was. But Abraham involved God. Lord, I'm, I'm dead. But I trust in you. My wife has no, no capacity anymore. We are dead. But we trust in you. We trust in you. Staggered not at the promise of God. Involved God. Did not involve himself anymore. But involved God. Being fully persuaded that God... That what he had promised, he was able to perform. Hallelujah. That he is able to perform. I would like to read that from another translation as well. Hallelujah. I would like to read from the Amplified No, verse 20, no unbelief or distress may in him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. He wasn't there some time back, but now he is there. But he grew strong when, when the flesh was dead. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word. And to do what he has promised. This is why his faith was credited to him as righteousness. Right standing with God. Hallelujah. How wonderful. How precious it is. Though I know. That there is much to be done in my own life in desire. The marvelous God was pleased with that faith. God was pleased with that faith. Hallelujah. And the marvelous gift of faith came in the person of Isaac. Hallelujah. This was wholly God's doing. Abraham had no part in it but faith. But trusting in God. But believing in God. Involving God. That's the part Abraham had. Hallelujah. Waiting for this to happen. Involving God. It was... Nothing lesser than a matter of God himself in this matter. Oh, my brothers and sisters, 
It's my prayer that God will help me and help all of us. In these days. To move on. So we see in the life of Abraham. God is there. Everything was contradictory. God has said. But everything seems to say that it is a mistake. It is wrong. The promises are not going to be. Cannot be relied upon. And he went through that trial in his life. And yet we see God involved himself. God involved himself. Abraham involved God. And these things were so real in the life of these men. It was a reality in their lives. It was God himself as we saw from Romans chapter 4. That was the issue for their faith. God was involved. Things not seen were so real. He was brought to that realm. Because God is involved. Beloved brothers and sisters. That is the only ground. That we can stand on. God. Is bound. God has bound himself with his will. God has bound himself with his will. This call, this purpose. And that can only be the ground of true faith. Abraham staggered not. God is bound with it. How much this is needed in my own life? How much this is needed in my own life? I am realizing more and more in these days. As fresh challenges come before me. <clears throat> fresh situations are coming before me. New battle friends. Suddenly falls. But I know one thing. God is helping me to learn this. God is bound with this call. And let me tell you one thing and warn us. If you have put faith in things. If you have put faith in things, if you have put your faith in men, you are going to have a hard time. I want to warn us, forewarn us about it. You are going to have a hard time. And I've seen that. People have been part of this local church and the body of Christ in other places. They are coming. They are confessed things. But their faith was not in the Lord and this call. The ground was not God's purpose. They put their faith in many things that they could receive from God. Maybe they will clear the civil services. They will have a better future. I want
want to say that we are not to put our 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 faith even on other people in the house of god we thank god for the brothers and sisters but our primary trust has to be in the lord faith in him and then in others that's very important what i would like to say here is the only ground is god the only ground is god now abraham god is heir the heir of the promise isaac is now everything to abraham but god wanted to see in abraham's life if god is still the ground or not i would like to say that again before i close the ground is god alone the will of god is bound with god alone the will of god is not just bound with you know some people but primarily it is bound with god and then god brings us into the body where there are men and women given themselves to that will wherein we can say boldly god brought me into this place god has brought the solitary into family and it is here i need to grow together with the brethren as paul says in the all the fullness in christ jesus hallelujah Amen. how important it is god it is his will that is the ground the ground the only ground is god god is the ground of faith hallelujah that's why the scripture says now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and a proving of things not seen we are proving things not seen in our lives and as we saw at the end all these men they proved things which were visible things which were contrary things which were hindering them all that passed away <laughs> all that passed away whether they were rejections there were contradictions there were enemies or there were sword whatever that was that all passed away they moved on to something which is eternal it was proved in their lives you know as we read in psalms 42 psalm 42 i'm going to close the time is almost up psalm 42 and verse 5 why art thou cast down O oh, my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why art thou cast down, O oh, so, oh, my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Hope thou in God. Don't be, you know, disquieted. Don't cast down, O oh my soul. Hope thou in God. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Hope thou in God. What is the object of our hope? Hallelujah. God himself is the object of our hope. The proving of things not seen. As the scripture says, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You know, let me close with these words. And I put together both. God who is invisible. And things not seen. Which are the assurance of things not seen. May God help us. Let's look unto the one who is invisible. Let's involve God. Oh may God help us. The will of God is bound with God himself. God himself. Let's take that into our heart today. And I will close here. May God help all of us. Dear brothers and sisters. As I said. Don't miss the burden. And the thrust of the Holy Spirit. There are many things we have heard. But don't miss that. Is my prayer as we close. Shall we all stand up in his presence? Let us return thanks to God. And thank. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, Lord. Just a few moments. To come before him. In the light of all that we heard. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Merciful Father, we thank you for causing us to hear your voice once again today, Lord. You have blown the trumpet in Zion. Loud and clear, O God. The daughters of Zion may rise from their slumber. Shake off every dust. Arise in faith and obey your voice. And come into That place where you are calling her in these days. Lord, we thank you for speaking to our hearts again. That faith that pleases God. Oh God, help us. Lord, we thank you for all that you have spoken. Even today, Lord. The assurance is your will, O oh God. And that will of thine is bound with yourself. None other than yourself, O oh God. Hallelujah. O Ramakaya Shaka Lord, it's my prayer even this afternoon. That everyone who would hear this word today may be brought under the conviction of thy word by the power of thy spirit of God. 
It's not a matter of I feel, we feel, we have heard. Oh God, deliver us from all those and bring us into that conviction, the grip of thy word of God. Jesus, your will, wherein you are involving yourself. And to involve you. Hallelujah. Oh God help me. Many have gone the way of Cain. The way of Balaam. And even the way, way of Korah. So easy to walk that way of Cain. One's own feelings. One's own understanding. Rejecting the inner convictions of the Holy Spirit. But Abel did cling to the way. That way he did not forsake. Though many other things were convincing to the natural man. He rejected the way of Cain. Hallelujah. How he was justified. Yes, with God. Help me, Lord. Help me, O oh God. How easy to go by the way of Cain and even Korah and even Balaam. Father, help me that I would involve you. Thank you for all that you have spoken, Lord. Millions of people in the earth today, everything that they do is just for one thing to justify, to be justified with God. Lord, it's your mercy that you justify the ungodly. And thank you for the day that you justified me in your son. But Lord, help me to understand that this is only just the lowest of the rung. Oh God, and there's much more to move on to. The just shall live by faith. And he shall move from faith to faith. Oh my God. Oh God, while many reject that today. Lord, help me. Oh God, to trust in you. That you would bring us into that full salvation. Yes, oh God. By your work in our lives. Thank you, Father, for speaking from the life of Abraham as well. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You waited for him. Yes, your father. He came to that ground of deadness. Lord, you are waiting for us to come to that ground in several areas. I know in my own life, Lord. And I know each one who is hearing thy voice today would know in their own lives where we have still strength to do things where we would not involve you fully. We will take your name but many a time we are involved. But Lord, you are zealous for that which you build. You build it by your strength. I will build my church. You are zealous over your glorious bride. Yes, your God. Lord, there is so much there. Holy Spirit, help us, bring us, Lord, to that ground and help us to realize, Lord, this is what you are looking for. The will of your purpose, this calling, it involves yourself, Lord. It involves yourselves, yourself, yourself, oh God. And help us to involve you in all our situations. 
stand firm on that ground of God. Help us, Father. Lead us further in our meditation. Help us, O God. And lead us in this meditation even coming week is our humble prayer. So we yield ourselves to Thee. We worship Thee. We bless Thee. We thank Thee. Give you the glory and praise again, Lord. Change us. Transform our lives. Make it more meaningful, purposeful in the coming week. You know the challenges. You know the battles which are waiting for us. You know all things of God. But help us to be determined to involve you. Knowing that you have called us into this. Great call and purpose. Worship, bow down, and bless you with all our hearts. Jesus, most precious and matchless name we pray. Amen.